Hey everybody, Mike B here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the use of chicken wire and various other methods of attaching camouflage to German helmets during the Second World War. If you haven't seen the other video that I made about what the purpose of having a net or even chicken wire or anything like that is on a helmet, I'll try to throw it in this video, try to figure out how to do that. If nothing else, the link will be in the description to the other video. I would suggest starting with that one, but this is a good place to start as well. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me over the years about nets in general on helmets, why, they, why soldiers would wear them. And then a lot of people said, oh, why do they have chicken wire on helmets? Well, it's the same concept. We're going to go over a little bit today about kind of the history of it, um, where it started, where it was common, where it was not common, and why it happened. And uh, before we get started really quick, um, I am just wearing this outfit as a visual aid discussing a historic topic or series thereof. There is no political affiliation from myself or anything to do with this video with certain ideologies. So let's just get that out of the way because I know there's going to be somebody that's going to comment on that like they always do. This is just me being a nerd and helping to teach a subject dressed as somebody who would have been affected and wearing um, the same gear. Now, that little disclaimer out of the way, a little caveat done, sealed up. Uh, let's get started. So it's a really common misconception. I went down a rabbit hole recently because I finally got some really good chicken wire, which we'll talk about in a bit. I'll do a shameless plug for my uh, small business, but it's a very common misconception that chicken wire was used in more places than just Normandy through kind of the end of the war in Europe on the Western Front from 44 to 45. It really starts showing up in Normandy. Now, why is that? Why didn't it happen in Italy? There's chicken wire in Italy, a little bit different. There's chicken wire in southern France. Why did they not wear chicken wire there? They would wear nets. They would wear camouflage cloth covers. Yes, I know, the Veraboos are going to be in the comments. He's wearing plain tree 3-4 with a, a, a here uniform. Ah! Relax, you don't have to have a coronary. It's just, I'm just doing it for a video. I'm not really trying to be historically super accurate. I'm just giving an example. I know there's so many caveats, but I get these comments all the time. So I just figured I'd get ahead of at least a few of them. Whatever, let's move on. So yeah, the Waffen SS specifically was utilizing cloth camouflage covers like this. From, I guess, there's a debate on when they exactly started, but they would get privately contracted batches made starting in about 1937-ish, but really 1939 is when you start seeing the Boffin SS um, being equipped with private purchase and contracted camouflage things. Now, the cloth covers were effective and eventually the army and the here and other branches like the Luftwaffe would be using cloth camouflage covers. They would wear splinter most of the time. That was the most common. And they would have these foliage loops in them, which we discussed on the last video and everything. So I'm not going to really go into that that much. So if you've got these cloth covers and you've got nets, because the Germans actually did wear nets too. I cannot find my example that I have. Uh, it's in a bin somewhere. I tried to look for it. I'm sorry. I'll make an eventual video on the German nets and how they were used. It's really nothing special. They're just kind of floppy, big, like twine nets. But I wish I had an example to show you. Now, all right. So we're moving on from the cloth covers to... Back to the chicken wire. Again, why are we talking about chicken wire? Why can't we just talk about the cloth covers and the nets? Because those were very common in Normandy and um, and most other fronts. There was cloth camouflage covers and nets. Why did this start in Normandy? One word, like I said in the last video, hedgerows. So what ended up happening, this is kind of a weird little fun fact, but if you know the terrain of Normandy and you've done some research on that, this will make total sense to you. It made total sense to me when I realized this and was um, taught this by experts. What happened was, after June 6, 1944, D-Day, right? The most famous D-Day of World War II, even though it was only one of hundreds. Um, after June 6, the invasion of Normandy, there was thousands, tens of thousands of German troops being pulled from the Eastern Front, from the MTO, or the Mediterranean uh, Theater of Operations, um, from different parts of, you know, Southern France, Central France, and Germany going up as an emergency kind of stopgap because they didn't expect that invasion to happen there and they didn't expect it to be that big. So you've got tons of these troops going up there and they're going to have those cloth covers like this, right? You're going to see a lot of the army and SS guys and, and Feischenjäger and all that having cloth covers. What happened was in Normandy, these infantrymen were fighting in these, well, combat arms, we'll just say, infantry guys on the ground. I know there's different MOSs like this is Panzer Grenadier. Yes, I know. This is what, this is why I don't like being a nerd and I don't like talking about nerdy stuff because I know other nerds like me will comment with nerdy things to correct people. Anyway, all right, nerd rant aside. Anyway, um, yeah, so they were equipped with cloth covers, helmet nets, and stuff like that. And what happened is when they were going through the hedgerows, 
um, doing um, squad tactics and whatever. The hedgerows are so incredibly thick and dense. I mean, if vehicles are having a problem getting through them, so are, so are people. And what happened is, um, this happened with the Allies too, but they didn't really, uh, I don't know, they, they just didn't ever really adopt the chicken wire as far as I can see, because the Germans had already thought of that. So the nets and the covers would get torn off, and also, you see a lot of camouflage painted helmets, I mean, you do see them on every front, but you see a lot of them in Normandy. Now, this is because, again, the hedges are so thick that it would actually just scrape the paint off of helmets, so it would become shiny, and then they would have to reapply camouflage, and then they said, okay, we need a way to A, protect the shells, and also apply camouflage because the nets are not holding up, the covers are not holding up. We also need to break up the silhouette of the helmet, which is the whole point of having a net on there, so, what is very prevalent in Europe? Houses or small farms with a few chickens and a little area to keep the chickens that has chicken wire in it. Now, European chicken wire is very different than the American chicken wire. I think it's called poultry mesh or something like that, maybe in Europe. If you're from Europe, like um, Central to Western Europe, I'm pretty sure, it might be Poland included in there. Let me know what you guys call this stuff. Specifically, it's the bigger stuff with the heavier gauge wire and it's got the bigger holes. I have a guy that is in Europe that makes this professionally. He made his own jig, and it really looks exactly like his original examples, and that's why I do sell these um, in my shop. I, I do up German helmets, and I do up Finnish, you know, rework helmets, and I will put chicken wire on them, and they're very popular. So shameless plug, if you want to get on the list for those, I do a few batches of those a year. Uh, check out the link in the description at mikesmilitary.com and sign up for the newsletter so you'll know exactly when I get a new batch of these things made. You can also have a half basket or a full basket or whatever. Um, but yes, so shameless plug. But back to the point is the European chicken wire was very prevalent and the Germans had these ideas of, hey, we need something durable that uh, works, that will not fall off, it will not tear. So they started taking this wire that was very common as well, like fence wire. And they would weave baskets. This is called a half basket, right? The full basket would just be chicken wire that was draped over the entire shell. These were really common as well because uh, they kind of look cool. I actually don't know the reason. It was up to each person's discretion as to how they were going to apply this basket to their helmet to apply camouflage. And it worked very well. So you would see these from Normandy, the Normandy campaign, all the way through the end into Germany because it did work so well, it was so effective. Now, before June 6, 1944, it really wasn't a common practice. I've seen a lot of original examples and a lot of photos. You don't see them starting to pop up in large numbers at all until the Normandy campaign. And why did the, only the Germans do it? I don't know, actually. I don't know why the Americans didn't adopt the same practice. I've, ne I've never seen an original example of chicken wire on an M1. If you have, or on a Mark II, or a Mark III, or Mark IV helmet, if you have, Try to post a link in the comments if you can to that picture because I'd love to see that because I've never seen one to date. Anyway, I know I'm, I'm kind of rambling. This is kind of my videos, but I love this topic and it's really cool and I'm finally able to cover it because I have correct chicken wire. Another way that camouflage would be attached is just straight up fence wire. If they, didn't, if they couldn't find chicken wire or whatever, they would do something like this, which is a very commonly seen um, kind of design of just a basic wire that goes over and I applied camouflage to this side just so I could show you how it works and then show you kind of how they actually would twist it, twist the uh, steel over the helmet. And this one is painted rough texture. This was a very common practice. Uh, this is one that I actually did sell to a customer. Uh, he identified himself in the comments on the other video. So um, yeah, I'll get this out to you probably tomorrow. I'm sorry, it's it's been taking a lot longer, but I have to make these videos because this looks so cool. It turned out so well and you're gonna love it when you get it. Anyway. So this is another extremely common practice because it's again wire, it's gonna hold up and it actually holds camouflage in, foliage in very, very well. So that's basically the gist of why chicken wire was used in Normandy and on German helmets and it was seen from about June uh, 1944 until the end of the war in May of 45 in Europe. And it's a unique thing, I don't think it's been done since but it was a very common practice during the Second World War and it looks very cool. It's one of the most iconic looks, I think, of the German helmet is having this, this just chicken wire, like the very European looking chicken wire, the big stuff. Like I said earlier, it's very different than American chicken wire, which is very thin, uh, small cells. And it's very, very weak gauge uh, wire. It's not this really heavy stuff. So um, anyway, I'm gonna stop ranting. Let me know if you got any questions. I Hopefully I answered all the questions that you might have because those are the questions that I had. 
And hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you got any experience with chicken wire. And again, if you see any other countries that wore them on their helmets like the Germans did, please let me know and figure out how to send me that photo because I would love to see it. I'm very curious. As far as I know, only the Germans would do this. You see it again on Weishemjäger helmets or paratrooper helmets, infantry helmets. You see it all over the place from Normandy on. Um, and it's just insane to me that this concept was so short-lived, I guess. So anyway, yeah, if you learned something, let me know in the comments, please. And uh, also, I do have a Patreon if you guys want to support my work and help me afford cool things like this for visual aids and like the tunic and whatever. Um, you can check that out in the link is in the description. Five bucks a month or more gets you into my Discord server, which is a really cool time. There's a lot of cool people that have been on there, on there for years. A really cool community. I really enjoy that. So if you want to, if you're interested in that, check that out. Um, if you can't do anything financial right now, I get it. It's a very tough time for a lot of people. Not a problem at all. You guys know how to support your favorite creators or just creators that you enjoy. Just like, you know, hit that like button, subscribe, the usual stuff. I don't need to go into that. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you learned, if you learned something, and if you got anything else to say about this. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.